We're on number four on the prerequisites practice test. Let's just review where we got to this point. So whenever there's no number in front of parentheses, we do put a one there. So I made a note that we were multiplying or distributing negative one into parentheses, and here we'll be distributing negative three. Because so oftentimes students will miss a sign because they won't look at that, and they'll just distribute the three. So just keep in mind, this is negative one we're distributing and negative three. 6a comes down, negative one times 9a, negative 9a, negative one times one, negative one, negative three times a, negative three a, negative three times negative one, positive three, less than two. Then I combine like terms. This is negative three a and negative three a is negative six a. And then we had negative 1 and positive 3. 3 minus 1 is positive 2. Less than 2. Then we need to move everything without a variable over to the right. So the opposite add 2, subtract 2, subtract 2, we get 0. And last but not least, we're dividing by keyword negative 6. So I immediately jump down to the next step and flip my sign. It doesn't matter that I'm dividing into 0. All that matters is that I'm dividing by a negative, and the rule is anytime you divide or multiply by a negative, the symbol flips. So negative 6 divided by negative 6 is 1a. Now the sign is greater than, and 0 divided by anything is 0. So if you wanted to check, let's say you weren't sure whether that was undefined or negative 6 or 0, well on this one you can't use the fraction bar. See that negative in the denominator? So you would use the actual division key. So 0 divided by negative 6, and you could verify that it is 0. It's not undefined. It's not negative 6. So never guess on those. Always let your calculator verify that for you. So greater than shades to the right because there's no equal sign. We use a parenthesis. So our first endpoint is 0. And since it shades to the right, that would be positive infinity. And last, our interval notation. Keep your two endpoints in the same order as the number line. 0 gets a parenthesis because there's no equal. And infinity always gets a parenthesis. So that is the end of inequalities. So let's go ahead and go to the next page. <clears throat> so number five is a review of Lesson 2-7, where we learned how to find x-intercepts, y-intercepts, and then it's also a review of Lesson, um, I think it was, hmm, 2-3. So this is kind of a combination of Section 2-3 and 2-7, because 2 threes where we learn to graph lines. 2, 7 is where we learn to do x and y intercepts. So we're asked to find the x-intercept, the y-intercept, the slope, and then we're asked to graph it. So x-intercept, we learn, means y equals 0. And if you look in your 2, 7 notes, that was the big concept. You always make the other variable 0. Why? Because when you're on the x-axis, Listen to the points, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0. See how all the y's are 0? That's why we do that. Likewise, to find the y-intercept, we make x 0. So let's go ahead and do those first. So x-intercept, make the y 0. And so we go up here. 
and we're going to fill 0 in there. So we have 3x minus 4 times 0 minus 12 equals 0. So now we solve what's left, and that will give us our x-intercept. Well, I don't want that out of the picture yet, do I? And it also reminds us to write the intercepts as ordered pairs. As I told you, sometimes Alex wants them as points. Sometimes they just want the coordinates. So if Alex won't let you plug in a parenthesis, then that means they just want the x-coordinate. But if they let you plug in a parenthesis, you should write it as a point. And every teacher on a paper pencil test will want it as a point. So 4 times 0 is 0. So we get 3x minus 12 equals 0. Bring your constant over to the right because we want only x's on the left. And we get 3x equals 12. So x is 4. So when we go to write our x-intercept, sorry, my paper clip isn't on correctly. Let me change that so my paper's not flying all over the place. Okay, sorry about that. So to write that as an ordered pair, as the direction stated, we just look at what x is, look at what y is, and that's why I always label that there, then I don't have to guess. So we can see our x-intercept is 4, 0. So then I can go up here and write 4, 0. And like I said, if Alex won't let you use the parentheses, then you'll just type in 4. That means they just want the x. Next, we have the y-intercept. y-intercept is when x is 0. And we can also find the y-intercept by solving for y and make it y equals mx plus b. But this way, we'll check our work. So I know I have to solve for y on the next step. But this way, I'm doing it algebraically. Then I can verify it once I get it solved for y. So I make x 0 this time, so it will be 3 times 0 minus 4y minus 12 equals 0. So this is 0, so it just goes away. And we get negative 4y minus 12 equals 0. Add your 12 over again. And we get negative 4y equals 12. Divide by negative 4, divide by negative 4, y equals negative 3. So as an order pair, that would be, I'll put it up here so we can see it, x is 0, y is negative 3, so it would be 0, negative 3. So now we can put that here, 0, negative 3. So if we want, we can go ahead and put those points on the graph. So 4, 0, and 0, negative 3. So here's 4, 0, and notice it is indeed on the x-axis where it should be because it's called the x-intercept. And then on the y-axis, we're going to plot the point 0, negative 3. And we can either find the slope from solving this equation, or we can find the slope from the graph. So let's do it both ways, and then it's kind of a nice little check. So slope, we know, is rise over run. Let's put it right here. Slope equals rise over run. So we learn to always start with the left-hand point when we're doing rise over run. So this would be rise 1, 2, 3. Let's just dot that in. 3 and run 1, 2, 3, 4. So the rise over run is 3 fourths. So that's one way to find slope from your graph. And remember that um, it always has to be simplified, so if you would have gotten like 6 over 8, just always remember to simplify. 
So let's go ahead and draw our line in and then let's solve this equation for y and that will check this to make sure it's correct and it will check your slope to make sure it's correct. Okay, never pick up my straight edge here. Okay, so make sure when you draw your lines use a straight edge and make sure you put arrows on both ends. Like I told you in our videos I count that as points on a paper pencil test. Have they used a straight edge? Did they remember to draw arrows on both ends? Because lines do go on forever in both directions. So since we have a little bit of room over here in the right hand or upper left hand corner, let's go ahead and take this equation and turn it into y equals mx plus b and verify all the things we found so far. So we want it to look like y equals mx plus b. We want y all by itself on the left hand side. So I see the x and 12 are already over here. So what if we put the 4y over there and then flip the equation over? Save us a step, right? So I need the y by itself. So I'm going to move it instead of the other two things. So because I'm moving it across the equal sign, I do need to make sure that I do the opposite. So I get 3x minus 12 equals 4y. And like I said, I don't like having my y on the left, so I'm going to flip this equation over. I mean, I don't like having my y on the right. Boy, I'm like left and right mixed up, aren't I? <laughs> So we have 4y equals 3x minus 12 to get y alone, which is what we need. We would divide everything by 4. And let's see what we get. Let's see if it verifies what we have. So this would be 3 fourths x minus 3. So if we've done our work correctly, our slope should be 3 fourths. Boom. And our y-intercept should be 0, negative 3. Ding, ding, ding. There we go. So I did it algebraically, counted the slope using the graph, but then I verified two of my answers. I can't verify the x-intercept that way, but I can verify these two are correct by solving for y. So I can see the slope, and I can see the y-intercepts correct. So we are good to go. Okay, let's go ahead and jump down to our slope problems. So determine the slope of the line. So it doesn't ask us to write an equation. It's just asking us to determine the slope. So to determine the slope, remember we use our slope equation. So let's go ahead and write it, and then you can have it all highlighted. Second y minus the first y over second x minus the first x. So that's definitely a highlightable thing or bubbled or however you want to or both of course. That's one of the formulas you do have to know have memorized for the test. Okay so we have m equals second y negative 7 minus the first y, 3, over second x, 4, minus, from the formula, the first x, negative 2. So we have a double negative going on there because a minus from the formula, and then we're subtracting a negative. So the first thing we want to do there is make that double negative positive. Don't do any work before you change that sign. That should be number 1. Negative 7 and negative 3, or negative 7 plus negative 3, or negative 7 minus 3 is negative 10. 4 plus 2 is 6. And as I told you when we were learning slope, slope is a fraction. It needs to be simplified just like every other fraction to get full credit or to get any credit at all. So these are both even. That means they'll be divisible by 2. And that gives us m equals negative 
5 over 3 for our answer.